Welcome to the Sheila C. Hill Show. And that C stands for come on in this room and have a sit down so we can chit chat just for a little while. Listen, the Sheila C. Hill Show is the ultimate go-to podcast for ambitious individuals who listen, if they want to improve their life or they want to have successful life and and learn valuable insights and expert tips, inspiring stories, we have it for you today. Listen, these inspiring stories are here and we are celebrating the students from my 30-day live Facebook challenge. They're here to speak to you, share their stories, share their insight and their wisdom. Listen, if this is your first time checking the Sheila C. Hill show out, listen, call mom and them so you can go ahead and subscribe, tell them we're on and they want to be inspired Listen, and but if you're new, hello, hola, bonjour, come come star. What's going on? Howdy and all of that. I want you all to be welcome and be a part of here. I really enjoy listening to the speakers. This is going to be in several parts because we do have about 12 speakers doing this summit. So I want you to listen to the the different parts and come back when they drop on the major prep platforms for the Sheila C. Hill Show podcast. So we're going to continue with the summit right now. We have Michelle Blakely all the way from Tennessee coming to the stage. Come on, Michelle. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Hello, Let's everyone. Go. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. My name is Michelle Blakely. And first and foremost, I'd like to thank our host and coach, Sheila C. Hill, for the opportunity to not only participate in this challenge, but also for um, allowing us to speak on her platform. So kudos to you. Uh, again, my name is Michelle Blakely. I am a mom, a wife, a grandmother, a great grandmother, a business owner, MBS Lifestyle Designs, and a genealogy. Um, I don't know what it is. I'm just Expert. So passionate, <laughs> passionate about it. So um, yeah, that's who I am. And I've been on this journey with my business for the last two years, decided to do a plan B on retiring. So I am a retiree and decided to continue with my entre entrepreneur journey. Um, so I started the business. It's an online boutique, clothing boutique, mainly for women. And it's for new and vintage apparel. I do um, virtual live sales and on Facebook. So this 30 day challenge of going live should have been a cakewalk. It was not because although I do go live for my business, I never share personal information. I never talk about myself. I never put my wall down and never let anybody in. <laughs> All of the things that this challenge required that I do. So this was an experience and a half. It truly was. I have had to dig deep um, to be able to come out with personal information just letting people into my world was a big deal. Um, Cause my world, it, it revolves around my family. And that's kind of the off, off limits area for me. And when I decided to do this, I knew that the genealogy passion would pour out because that was one of the things that um, has been driving me in the last few years. I am a product of ancestry or DNA um, results that rocked my world as well as a lot of other people's world. So it took me on a journey. I started a journey in, in genealogy, wanting to know more about my mother's family because her grandmother, no one had ever seen her and so we were looking for information on her and in my research and on my journey and submitting my dna i had a paternal match that um no one expected 
So it took me into another world of finding out about a biological parent that I knew nothing about and gaining biological siblings. And it has been phenomenal. So that journey is something that I've been building on and just using that to continue to uh, help others because it requires such a mindset shift. And so to prepare others for what they may or may not find and to be to know that they're ready because I've had so many people reach out about the DNA that I felt like it was time for me to start opening up. I have started, I'm about to publish a little book and that is my book on my experience. So it's, it's gonna tell you about what I experienced and how it affected me and so many other people. In the interim, I have created some guides. I've created a Facebook group. And <laughs> this was something that I had to really work on because I wanted to make sure that all of the, my new siblings were on board with me sharing my journey. And that's one of the things with genealogy. Whatever you're doing, it's not just you. What you do and what you say and what you reveal affects a ton of other people. So you have to make sure that they're on board with um, what you're doing. So I started a new Facebook group um, for all of the people to come in and be able to open up, ask questions on a non-judgment spot. And it's a personal group, I mean, a private group. And I purposely made it private so that those who come in and want to open up and discuss what's going on in their lives and how it affects them or ask questions, we can help one another. Um, it is, it is one of my passions to make sure that um, others don't go through trauma. It doesn't have to be traumatic if you prepare for it. So the, the Facebook group I've started, I've said it three or four times, Se Secrets Unveiled, The Journey to Healing. And I named it that because we grew up in a society where our <laughs> ancestors, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents had a lot of secrets. And I'm of the generation that now it's time to unveil. It's time to open up. It's time to let those secrets come out so that we can heal and we can have children who are healed and their children can be healed. So there'll never be another generation of people who grow up thinking, I need to check them out a little further to make sure they're not one of my relationships. I don't want to sleep with my brother. You know, that kind of secret, because those, and it, that's exactly what it is, it's generational curses. But I am of that mindset now and that passion. As far as my, um, my retail business, it is about women who have been through some things that need some, that confidence boost. So I get a lot of unique apparel. I get a lot of sizes for all women in all walks of life, professional, casual, glamorous, whatever it is, extra small through 5X. So I have a lot of people that'll reach out and I'll do one-on-one -on -one consulting and find a specific item for them. Or I'll find a wardrobe put together a whole wardrobe. So that's kind of where I'm at with that, especially when it comes to the women who have been going through things. I do donations for the Domestic Violence Center so that they are ready when they step out to look for that job. So, cause no one, I believe this with every fiber of my being, no one should ever look like what they've been through. So that's part of, who I am and 
I'm getting a little, um, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. so Take your time. I've been it's there, okay. you know. So fashion, confidence, and passion about your roots, knowing who you are, we have a right to that information. Knowing who you are, whose you are, and that everyone has a right to know what their roots are. Everyone has a right to be able to step out and be proud of who they are. So if your confidence is low, put on something pretty. There's something that's uniquely you. And see if it doesn't make a difference. Take those joggers off. You know, it doesn't matter if you're not going anywhere. Dress up to sit in the house for you. Nobody's home, but dress up anyway. Because it feeds your soul. Again, my name is Michelle Blakely. My business is MBS Lifestyle Design. And I have Secrets Unveiled, Journey to Healing as my genealogy group. I do have a guide that I will be offering and I would appreciate it if you will um, check the links and there will be a form in there and I will email that guide. Join my group and these downloads of information will be happening on a weekly basis with a ton of discussion about how we move forward, what resources to use and it's kind of dependent on where you're at in your journey. So for now, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I appreciate the time and the opportunity. Blessings. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, please go shop at her online boutique and join her Facebook group if you need assistance with genealogy. You have questions if you're looking, if you're in search for someone as well. Listen, I really ne never thought about the mindset shift that comes with the genealogy portion. I mean, that makes sense though. You need to prepare your mind because you never know what the results is going to be. And if whichever way they are, you still have to prepare, have a, a mindset change. Woo, wow, wow, wow. That's that's interesting. Woo, you have to prepare for it. Mm. But also time to unveil the, all these secrets in order to heal. Mm. And when you said dress up, take those spanks and stuff off. What? Even my sweats, I need to dress up and I feel good from the outside in, right? <laughs> I love it. Thank you very much for sharing. That was awesome. Thank you for sharing your story. Woo. All right, baby, let's keep this is going. All right. So we have on the stage, he's right here at the door. He's ready to come on all the way from Arizona. We have Mr. Doyle Duncan coming to the stage. <laughs> Hello. Doyle Duncan, I don't, I don't know Doyle I'm, Duncan, but I'm sorry. I, I accept that because she, my niece is in this too, so we're That's both right. good with this. I'm sorry, Doyle. We, we, we're good with that. I see the connection. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay. My apologies, old okay. David. No problem. All right. Thank you, Sheila, and hello, everyone. Today, you have been listening to some wonderful women welding the tools that has shaped and molded the clay of their lives, just so that they can bring those ideas to you in an effort to become change agents. Ladies and gentlemen, for nearly the last 18 years of my life, I have been engaged in doing the same, chiseling and etching away at becoming a change agent. Now, to be honest, some ideas can not simply be explained. The ideas I am presenting to you now are one of those ideas. But before I get started, let me ask a question. Are you aware that the person who actually created the idea that is now on the internet is still alive and living in Switzerland? That person is a real person. Remember the Wright brothers? The two brothers who back in 1903 designed the first airplane that has now evolved into jets and have de delivered men to the moon. 
I bring this up to you because the ideas that you will now bear witness to are first time ideas that I have created and I myself have related to the aforementioned personalities. Let me also ask you a rhetorical question just to give you an idea to how big this moment is. How do you create an economy that is robust, sound, and structured in a way that will be efficient enough to overcome mankind's own misgivings? An economy that continues giving and giving and giving without ceasing. Is it possible? I say absolutely yes, based on my own research and studies. However, I really don't know because no man has been able to do so, so far. But remember, we were not able to fly at one time or communicate long distances at one time either. I am willing to give it a go because I have spent the last 18 years working on just that. The idea of bridging the gap towards prosperity for everything on God's green earth. And not just for man himself, but for everything. But I can't do it alone. Like every other designer of any great ideas, I need help in order for me to continue building this new economic renaissance, an idea whose time has come. You see, I built this system up with you in mind. That's one of the reasons I affectionately had labeled this new economic renaissance to serve with love, meaning CER is creative economic renaissance with the power of love. So what I am presenting to you now is not a business idea in how to make money, so I can't approach it by applying business concepts. It is not a scientific idea or a new medical breakthrough. So those approaches were not on the table for me to apply either. However, what I discovered is that that new ideas and new creations had two things in common that gave each of the creators the momentum to continue building. And those are intent and in intention and attention or purpose and focus. So ladies and gentlemen, the ideas that I am unfolding before you today are not ideas that were meant for one man to control. Yes, I have become the embodiment, the nuclei, the focus point, and the creator of everything you will now come to discover as we move forward. Here, here is the summary of our plans to usher in a new economic renaissance. Our plans are to create an evolutionary process of continued growth by redesigning the economic system to imitate nature so that the economy will become more efficient in its outcome and production. To get started, we will build a research foundation that will house everything. The three models we will use to get started is nature first, the NFL, the National Football League, pre-2015 when it was a nonprofit, and also the Chamber of Commerce. Those are the three models we will use to put this idea together. We will also apply for two licenses, a 501c3, to build social business structure, to feed the hungry, house the homeless, clothe the needy, disaster relief, modern day slavery, which is also human trafficking, protecting the environment, the only home we have, and social business development. The second license we will apply for is 
a 501c6, Development of Social Business Enterprise, which is a combination of businesses, business leagues, trade associations, and nonprofits working together to create a new robust economic idea. We will have an investment arm. I call it the May Factor. We will also have a personal development arm for self-awareness, self-actualization, spiritual growth, emotional intelligence, and financial intelligence. So how do I get started and get this new enterprise rolling in the right direction? To start with, I will first apply love in a new way in order to produce more love. I will first put a call out for like-minded individuals who are producers in their own ranks and ask them to volunteer their professions, services, skills, talents, and money to help and create something new to which their talents and skills can be de developed in a whole new environment to which they themselves can be the first to do so and become a founder first class within the vision. Therefore, be the first leaders to capture a new marketplace that does not exist yet. Similar to how the tech industry introduced to us wireless technology. And the two Wright brothers introduced us to flying. Two industries that were not present prior to their introductions to us by the aforementioned individuals. This approach will become the beginning of to serve with love. With, with love is used to produce love. These volunteers will become known as the League of Volunteers Evolving, which is the League of Love, who will become known by the public as the individuals who help to build a develop and develop to serve with love through their own skills, talents, and money. In closing, I said earlier that I need your help. I need you to help me help you to help me help you. Simply put, this is the plan. Just remember, I am standing at the beginning with you. And from here, there is nowhere to go but up or true north. At this point, we are poised to start growing together in this endeavor. I don't have a web page for you to gather information from. I have taken it down for repair, but I will get back, get it back up and running again. However, you can follow our progress and become a change agent on Facebook at facebook.com slash Doyle H. Davis. As I continue to update and update my, my interests for, for on my person, personal page, which is not fully functional yet. I, I just screwed that up. You can scratch that out, people. I will start my first podcast on January the 25th, 2024. Okay, Sheila, stop I'm laughing. You're supposed to be a leader here. Which is on a Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Mountain Standard Time in Arizona. For all of you who don't know, Arizona never changed time. Our st time stays the same. You guys are the widows who keep changing your times on people, make confusing the rest of us. From this day forward, the recruiting will start and continue. I will give full instructions about recruitment on my Facebook page. Everything now is about teaching, growing, and recruiting, and yes, financing this endeavor before we open the doors to our research foundation. To start with, I will accept invitations to speak these ideas into existence. If you want to give to our cause, you can contact me first through my Facebook page at 
Again, facebook.com slash Doyle H. Davis and or contact me at lifeistheproject at gmail.com. And we, we can move forward from there. You can purchase my book at three locations. You can purchase it at lifeistheproject.net. You can purchase it at Life is the Project, excuse me, Amazon, and in the cursor, put Life is the Project slash Doyle Davis. On eBay, you can purchase the book at Life is the Project slash Doyle Davis. Thank you for your time. And now I'm back to Sheila Hill. Thank you, Mr. Doyle Davis. Good job. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you for sharing. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So be the change agent. All right. So he's going to be ahead of that. 18 years. The idea is to bridge the gap to prosperity. Listen, whoever listens to this and this resonate with, with you, please follow Mr. Doyle Davis and contact him. Life is the project at gmail.com. Get his book economic the new economic renaissance created with the power of love and listen he loves these acronyms if you haven't followed him on facebook he breaks that love down too it ain't just our regular love y'all so you're gonna have to go back and check his lives out <laughs> purpose and focus listen he needs your help please tap 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 in to mr dole davis thank you and we're not widows because we change our time mr dole <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I wish they would stop that myself actually <laughs> thank you very much for sharing and thank you for putting all thank these you. dedicated 18 years of service I tell you um, but we just never know who listens to this who will be able to, to connect with you and be the change agents that you need so thank you for sharing alright so we're moving next we're going on a trip we're going on a trip and where are we going? We just left Arizona where they don't change their time. Now by way of Louisiana and now from New York, we have Miss Carla Lewis coming to the stage. Welcome. Thank you, Miss Sheila. Um, hello everyone. Hey y'all, hey. Um, my name is Carla Lewis. First, I would like to thank Ms. Sheila for giving me this opportunity to be on this platform. Um, thank you for being our coach and dedicating your time to the 30-day challenge and to this speaker's summit tonight. I want to thank the anonymous donor who is the reason why I was able to participate in this challenge. Thank you so much, whoever you are. Um, and um, tonight, I would like to talk about um, some health issues. So uh, I am a breast cancer survivor. And if you're watching us now, you can see I have um, a tattoo on my shoulder. It is a butterfly with the pink ribbon in it. That's actually a tattoo over the port that was used to do my treatments. Um, so that tattoo means a lot to me. Um, but I don't, I don't, I'm not even talking about the cancer thing right now. Um, a lot of people, when I would post about my journey, and I did it to be lazy. <laughs> I didn't feel like texting and calling everybody and keeping them up to date with everything. So I just started posting um, on Facebook. And um, people were like, you're so strong. How are you doing this? And, you know, you seem fine. And it's like, having breast cancer is nothing compared to the battle that I had with mental health. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I was given a team of doctors and nurses and there was a plan, like everything was given to me. Like, this is what's gonna happen here. Th you may experience this, this may happen. Just everything was mapped out for my breast cancer treatment. But with my mental health journey, I was misdiagnosed for four years. So I was being given medication that was agitating my, um, what I do have. So I have bipolar two. And bipolar two is not as um, extreme as bipolar one. So it's often missed. So I kept being diagnosed as depressed and being given medication for depression. And the depression medication was agitating me. 
Um, so like it would work for a little while, but then it would start agitating my symptoms of bipolar two. Um, so the way that it shows up, it shows up with bouts of hypomania. So you'll have like these big bursts of energy followed by lows, but like the burst of energy isn't like with bipolar one. With bipolar one, you have like erratic behavior and you go on shopping sprees and you may have like unsafe behaviors and just to the extremes. But with bipolar two, I would stay up for days or like I would only sleep four hours, but I would be energetic. Like I'd have all this energy and like, I know I'm supposed to be sleeping, but I'm not sleeping <laughs> and I would not be tired. And I would ask my doctors, I'm like, I know it, it's not right for me to only sleep four hours and no one could figure out what was going on because I was seeing um, primary care doctors. I hadn't been referred to a psychiatrist, which should have been the first thing, like refer me to a psychiatrist to see what was going on, especially since they were diagnosing me with depression. Why didn't anybody refer me to a psychiatrist or a psychologist? And I didn't know any better. I'm just like, okay, my doctor said that I'm depressed and my doctor said, take this medicine. So I'm just doing what my doctor said. Um, so it wasn't until I ended up having a full on manic episode because I had too much um, serotonin in my system and um, like I was talking, I ended up in the ER and talking to the psychiatrist on call. He was asking me different questions and he was like, well, why are you on um, Zoloft? And I said, that's what my doctor gave me. And he said, you're not, that's for people that are um, depressed all the time. He's like, talking to you, it seems like it's situations that cause you to be depressed. It's not something that's an everyday thing. And I was like, no, it's not. He said, well, you never should have been put on it. And this is why you're in the hospital, like have, having a full blown on medic episode because you shouldn't have been put on this medication. And I was like, okay. Um, but I still didn't get properly diagnosed as being bipolar too until I started feeling like that same surge coming on. It's like, okay, some, I feel like I'm gonna have another medic episode. Let me go to the ER. And I went to the ER and they said, well, we're running your vitals all your vitals are coming back fine. We, we're not able to diagnose what's going on. And they gave me um, a list of providers to reach out to. So um, ended up going to this um, mental health center. Um, they were the only ones that could take me. I had to show up there at 7 a.m. on a Friday and wait until I could get seen. I didn't get seen until afternoon, but it's like, I need to figure out what's going on. So I sat there and just scrolled on my phone and when I got to the doctor, I was talking like a mile a minute and just on and on and on and on and on. And when I finally took a breath, he said, you have bipolar too. And I said, huh? And he said, you you don't sleep. And he's like, you have sat here and talked to me like nonstop for about 10 minutes. And he was like, that is classic symptoms of someone who has bipolar too. And I said, well, why didn't anybody else catch that? And he said, well, primary care doctors aren't trained to catch bipolar too. He said, they'll give you the test and your test is gonna come back that, you know, you don't have bipolar because you're not out here going on a shopping spree. So they're not trained to catch that. Somebody should have referred you to a psychiatrist and one of us would have caught it right away. Cause he's like, just talking to you, I, I know what it is like you you have bipolar too so I was finally put on the proper medication <laughs> and I felt at ease like I didn't you know how some people are like because of the stigma like they're scared of the diagnosis but I was like I now it makes sense like <laughs> things make sense now I was relieved and I felt normal again because the depression medications make it make, would make me feel like I was like in a cloud and I would take them so that I wouldn't be depressed, but I didn't like walking around feeling like I was in a cloud. But um, being on the proper medication, I'm, I'm, I'm back to normal. And I, I work in, I've always been a salesperson, so I could sell and be alert and catch things that clients are saying that will um, trigger you to like offer certain things. And it's just, it was such a relief <laughs> to be properly diagnosed. So I started talking about my mental health journey on Facebook and um, people would message me because they're too afraid to put it out there that they have a mental health diagnosis. And I'm like, if you had a heart issue, 
you would say you had a heart issue. You would take your medication for your heart. Why are you scared to take medication for your mental health? Like it's the same thing. There's an imbalance there and that medication is going to help you balance everything out. You can't pray everything away. You can't speak affirmations and it just goes away. Like there's a chemical imbalance. And so you have to, there, is, there are ways to do it without medication, but you have to get there. And sometimes you need that medication to help you to get to that point where you can do the other things that don't require you to take medication. But I, I like talking about my mental health experiences so that people know that they're not alone because I felt alone when I was first diagnosed. Nobody talked about it. And then when I started talking about it, I had family members that are like, oh yeah, I experienced X, Y, Z. And I was like, well, it's genetic. <laughs> and none of us are talking about it. So um, like Miss Michelle said, the family secrets, like my grandmother had dealt with some stuff and some of my aunts. And I'm just like, Nobody talked about this. I didn't know. Um, I was I was a kid. Like I, I knew that you know sometimes somebody would go away for a little while, but I didn't know why. <laughs> and it's because they were dealing with mental health things, and then they they were embarrassed to talk about it because they were made to feel like something was wrong with them. Well, I'm I'm here to say there's nothing wrong with you. That's just the cards that we were dealt, and. In, if it was any other health diagnosis, we would take care of it. So like with my breast cancer, I was given steps to take. You can do the same thing with your mental health journey. Follow those steps so that you can be okay and be quote unquote normal. <laughs> like live your best life. Um, I'm a testimony that it's not um, the end of the world. I have my own business. I have a mentoring program. Um, I work with some heavy hitters in the arena that I'm in. Um, I, I do a lot of great things. So being bipolar doesn't stop me from being great. Um, so I want to encourage everybody, if, you, if you're having issues, um, seek a doctor. Um, if a primary care doctor is giving you a diagnosis, seek a second opinion from um, the psychiatrist or a psychologist because that's their field that's their specialty don't just go along with the first diagnosis like I did <laughs> because it it caused a lot of issues for a long time um so you can find me on social media on Facebook my name is Carla Lewis my tag on all other social media sites is Carla Marie LLC. So that's C A R L A M A R I E L L C. And you can find me on um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, all of those things with uh, that. You can also, my website is Carla Marie.com, or you can put in Carla Marie LLC.com, which will uh, redirect you to my actual website because <laughs> I did purchase that domain um, try to have everything even across the board but um, yes sorry I didn't even say what my business was <laughs> I um, have a virtual assistant and online business management um, company and um, my mentor program is specifically for those people that want to be virtual assistants and online business managers and what I do is with my agency, when I receive um, work, I outsource it to my mentees. So um, as I'm I'm getting out there and I'm working with a PR person and Ms. Sheila and this challenge has gotten more visibility, I'm getting more clients. So the, um, I do have people that reach out and they're like, well, how can I work with you? By being one of my mentors, because I, I don't want to give something to someone and then it's not the same quality that I would give. So um have to be in my mentor program in order to receive the work. They receive a hefty commission on it. <laughs> um, and that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you very much, Carla. Yes. Listen, okay, so if you need a virtual assistant, and she does a lot of research too. She didn't mention that, but yes, she does. She loves researching. So um, believe me, contact her, get in contact with her. Listen, thank you for sharing your story. Um, 
And kudos to you for being a breast cancer survivor. Let's give you the dabs on that. Yes, yes, yes. Listen, I totally get it. I understand. My mother just recently went through as well. And it is really challenging. And the mental, the mental piece of it, the mental health is so important. And that's one thing that we, I really highlight on my show because I have had challenges with, with mental health as well. And so many people shun it. And they don't talk about it. Like you said, yes, in a family, it's a hush-hush thing, but no more. It is time to bring it to the forefront and talk about this because it is needed. And there's no need to go to the next generation and we're still having the same problems. And when you have to advocate for yourself too, when you go to these doctors, they like to sort of just push some pills at you, but advocate, research, and do what you have to do. And don't be afraid to get another doctor. So kudos to you. And I'm so glad that you was able to find something that works for you. Congratulations, Carla. I'm so, girl, I, I loved your story. I loved it. I love the resilience and to say, hey, you're still a business owner. You just didn't let that define who you are, your illness, your things that you went through with your breast cancer. And I remember hearing one of your lives where you said, they was like, well, you just need to collect the check and just have disability. Like, no, you was determined. No, I, I can do something. I, I'm, I'm worthy and I have skills and I'm super dope on top of that. So yes, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. All the way. All right. So we were in New York with, with Carla. So now we're going to go down South to North 